the optical illusion of Imhotep. Instruction Before being led into the vault where the initiation ritual will occur, the candidate is first prepared in the antechamber by an initiator of no less rank than this 2C degree, who explains to the candidate the background history behind, the characters involved in, and the events portrayed by the 2C degree initiation ritual. Thus, Guide. In the contributor's degree, we learned about the dream that Cheops, Kefren, and Menkare had about heaven. In the 2A degree of the symbolic series, we learn how Imhotep, the Three Kings Vizier, commissioned Nyarlahotep to conscript workers to build the monumental tombs envisioned by the Three Kings. In the 2B degree that followed, we saw how Nyarlahotep attempted to betray and murder Imhotep. Although these events have, thus far, been presented as true, we understand they are not necessarily factually accurate. In this 2C degree, we will learn what parts of this story are not factually accurate. But we must remember that what we have learned, though historically fictional, is only symbolic of a greater truth. Truth is infinitely greater than fact and fiction combined. And, just so, is the one true God greater than all creation. Although we can use geometry as a tool to accurately represent measurements greater than even the entire known universe, we must realize knowledge of such does not raise us up to be equal with God. By such knowledge, added to such humility, we grow wise with understanding, and so may do God's work thus earning his just rewards. These rewards themselves are known only to God and are not ours unless given to us by him. Thus we will now learn how Imhotep discovered the truth of God greater than all the falsehoods and facts of his creation. Instruction The guide asks the candidate if they understand and, if the candidate confirms they do, then the guide escorts the candidate to and through the door of the vault. Once inside the vault, the guide closes the door behind them and leaves the candidate alone in the pitch darkness. After a moment has passed, a deep booming voice speaks, representing Metatron, the voice of God. Voice over. Metatron. You have failed me, Imhotep. To serve the desire for immortality in history, did you commit necromancy for three heathen kings? You may have believed I would judge your deed only by its results and not as the deed itself. Your motives may be just, but if you do wrong to accomplish what is right, you serve neither wrong nor right. Because to do right, you can do no wrong than by doing wrong for the right reasons. You only plant poison seed. Communication between the living and the dead is indeed possible, even bringing a dead body back to life. But by doing so, we are removing their souls from the path of evolution towards heaven. You did not know that your corpse workers needed their own souls. You sought to make them all alike. 
using only a single soul, thus making the one an archetype above the others. But all things alive are individual and unique by nature. By giving the couriers oversight and teaching them what is right, you have drawn out a unique soul in each, and these, being not born, but brought to life artificially, had to come from souls already evolved past death who volunteered to return to life. What you cannot foresee is how these superior souls, tainted by their dead flesh, will eventually turn against you. History, therefore, shall remember their deed as immortal, but they themselves must be destroyed utterly. Therefore, you will only be remembered to the degree you accomplish that, because your deed can only be justified by their liberation. You must undo your deed of evil by freeing the ones who accomplish good on your behalf. If flesh is their prison, or if it is Egypt's underworld, you and your seed shall lead them to liberation until the final day, and that is my commandment to you. Imhotep, this is what you must do for your workers. You must mummify their corpses, and then wait for them to desiccate each buried beneath a pyramid, underground. Your offspring shall then dig up the mummified workers and burn their bodies into ash. The ash must be mixed with water. The offspring of your offspring must then make 72 clay pots out of these ashes of the workers and bury them beneath the surface of the Dead Sea. Inside these clay pots will dwell the workers' souls. Your offsprings, offsprings, offspring, must then dig these up, for inside them will be found writings directions on what next to do with these souls. I will tell you that, by their right interpretation, the heavens will be opened up before all, and all creation will be revealed. More than this, I cannot tell you, Imhotep, because of your servitude to these three heathen kings. Though your heart was right, your deed was wrong. Now the great pyramids will be forever falsely remembered as tombs until Judgment Day. For only by freeing the workers' souls from their bodies utterly will your offspring open the gates of heaven before the eyes of all. These souls are my self-selected fallen angels, but they shall be the redemption of all mankind. They will teach everyone what you have taught them, and so the curse of humanity, Kabbalah, will have survived the flood and destruction of Enoch's Atlantis. Because of your deed, the temptation of Adam by Raziel will continue to be manifest as ignorant blindness among some and true insight among only the few until Judgment Day. Only then will I send my own Son, Christ, to welcome all humanity back into Paradise who turn away from all falsehoods 
and temptations to ignore the lessons of their history. It was for the seven Archon's powers that the twelve Archons fell, and so the flood destroyed Atlantis. But I tell you, the twelve Archons only fell to the powers of seven because of you, Imhotep, for you practiced necromancy to raise the powers of the seven Archons to anoint the dead with one new soul. By raising the dead, you reincarnated souls. When these souls are finally freed on Judgment Day, then the temptation of Adam by Raziel will finally be forgiven of everyone living and dead. Understand now, Imhotep, that only then will they all be forgiven, and until then, all existence, my entire creation, will remain the purgatory of all souls. Imhotep, the mind is the soul. Imhotep, wake up. Imhotep, arise. Instruction. Suddenly a rift opens in front of the candidate whose eyes have by now grown accustomed to the dark. At first, a blinding light shines through. As the candidate's eyes begin to adapt, they can make out that the rift is the Jacob's Ladder of Electricity arising between the twin stele from the preceding 2B degrees ritual ceremony. On the far side of the rift appears Tahotep, standing just behind Nyarlahotep, who appears like a mummified reptilian humanoid. Suddenly, from behind the candidate comes the voice of the guide, who snuck in behind them when the candidate first entered the vault. Voice over. Guide one. It is I, Nyarlahotep. It is I, Tahotep, it is I, Imhotep, return from beyond the grave, in the realms of nothingness, beyond even the underworld. I have come back from beyond the abyss that outstretches the deepest nether realms. Bow now, my son, bow before your father who was conquered in eternity. Bow now, you traitor. For either way, this chaos beast's form is once more your fate for your treachery against me. Instruction. The guide then grips the candidate on the shoulder, surprising them as much as possible, and quickly turns the candidate around away from the spectacle on the rift and escorts them hurriedly out of the vault and into the antechamber. Guide. So you see now how the ancient saying about looking long into the abyss, that it looks long into us, has a double meaning for we initiates of the third degree. To clone a body is to summon a soul, and to resurrect the dead is to reincarnate souls. In the East this was believed perpetual, and in the West associated with Judgment Day, but we, who have learned of Atlantis, the civilization before the world flood, know that this only occurs if one raised the dead, and we understand this to refer to the activation of junk DNA by using usually unused neurons. When we delve as deeply as possible into our own composition, we discover our ubiquity with the entire universe on the most fundamental levels. Thus, by altering our internal composition, we project change outwards that can have a direct effect on our surrounding environment. Eventually, we discover that each of us exists inside our own unique universe in a multiverse, and that the greater a universe seems within to be expanding, the more it is evaporating into the nulliverse that consumes the forms and light 
of the multiverse.